Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career. Now, in this video, which is going to be about five minutes long, I'm going to share with you all my strategies, tactics, and tips so that you can pass nearly any certification exam when we're talking about tech. Uh, I'm going to discuss the very high-level strategy that I use. Uh, it turns out there's a term for it. I just kind of stumbled upon it. I found it worked for me. Uh, then I'm going to dive into the tactics after the strategies. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some tips that have worked on all the exams I've taken, and they're, they're very valuable. Uh, if you like that, go ahead and skip to the end. Just check that out right now. But if you need help with your strategy, you, you need help figuring out a good way to structure your learning when you're doing it on your own, watch the whole video. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, so here we go, getting into the, the fun stuff. Um, I found that when I'm studying for an exam, I uh, do best when I'm when I, I do intense focusing on a subject, uh, whether it's it's learning a specific piece of technology. I focus on it for 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes if I'm really feeling focused that day. But then I got to take a break and I'll, I'll stop doing what I'm doing there. Um, I'll kind of get up, I'll walk around, I'll stretch. Uh, I'll go outside for a few minutes, um, you know, check email. I let my mind wander a little bit. I kind of take a break. I relax. I don't focus on what I was just learning. But then I'll come back after five or 10 minutes of that, you know, uh, taking a break kind of thing. And I'll focus again for another 10, 15, 20 minutes, as long as I can. And I'll keep repeating this cycle. And it turns out uh, Dr. Dr. Barbara Oakley from uh, a university up here in Michigan, actually, she came out with a, a course on Coursera called Learning How to Learn. And she identifies in that two ways of learning. One is called focus learning and one is called diffuse learning. Focus learning is just what I was describing to you, where you focus intensely for a few minutes, 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer if you can. But then you, you take a break and you back off from that. And that's the diffuse learning. The diffuse learning is, is where you tie together all these skills you've learned using focus learning, but you're not really trying to learn. You're just taking a break. It's, it's sort of, it's giving your brain uh, downtime so that you can, it can do the magic in the, behind the scenes. Uh, and it's, it's proven to be very effective for me. So that's a strategy I recommend. Focus intensely, do as much as you can. Maybe it's a paragraph. Maybe it's not even a paragraph. Maybe it's a really dense paragraph and you can just pull out two or three sentences. And those two or three sentences are going to keep you busy. What are you going to be busy doing? Not highlighting, not underlining, taking summary notes, putting in your own words onto paper, onto the screen, typing it out. Whatever you do, don't underline, don't highlight. That doesn't really do anything for you. I found for me that that's, that's you know, a terrible waste of your time. Take summary notes, which means process it. Think about it, what, you're, what you just learned. Put it into your own words and put it onto uh, whatever medium you want to use. Uh, so do that for as long as you can. Uh, maybe it's going to be hands-on labbing. It's going to be reading out of documentation on one screen and then working with the technology on the other screen. Do that as long as you can. Take summary notes there. Make a mini test when you're all done. But the main thing is, is when you're done with the focused effort, take a break. Walk away. Get a drink. Get a coffee. Don't look at the screens for a while. Get outside. Talk to other people. Whatever you got to do to let your mind kind of take a break and wander. So... Now I'm going to get into the tactics. Now that we've talked high-level strategy, here's some of the tactics I found to be really useful. Number one, don't multitask. When you're, when you're studying, you're studying only what you're studying. You're not going to skip around the study guide. Don't do that. Don't let your phone bother you. Don't check work emails. Focus on just the one thing that you're doing. Number two, like I mentioned before, taking summary notes. This is, this is something I stumbled across because uh, I spent a lot of time underlining and and highlighting electronically and with a highlighter and then I don't recall any of it. But when you take a summary note, when you process it in your brain and then you put it into your own words, what you're doing is you're locking it away so that you can recall it later. And that's that's super useful, especially when we're talking about multiple choice exams, which is for a lot of certifications in the tech field, how they're delivered. So number three, hands-on labbing. When we're talking tech and we're talking multiple choice questions, you can probably skate by by uh, reading the study guide, maybe reading another study guide, reading the documentation, and never actually touching the technology. Some people can do that. Um, I did that on my first CCNA, on the CSENT, on the Cisco certification. I didn't lab any of it. I didn't think it was necessary. And I passed it by, I think, four points out of 1,000 possible. I think passing was like 704, and I got 708, 710, something like that. I passed by the skin of my teeth. 
I got very lucky. I learned that lesson. And on the second part of the C CCNA exam, I labbed. I did much better. It was way easier experience. Uh, overall, it was just so much more enjoyable. So that's number three, hands-on lab all the time. Number four, and this is kind of what I'm doing here and what I'm doing on LinkedIn and Twitter. Teach others. As you learn something, it is so useful to you as somebody who's going to have to recall it on an exam when you're under a little bit of pressure to teach somebody else what you've just learned. Teaching others, whether it's it's abstract like this, where I, I you know I'm talking to myself into a camera for for all intents and purposes. I don't know what you're thinking right now. I can't say, well, here's the answer to the question. Something like this, or even in a group, Google Hangouts, uh, maybe with coworkers, whatever it is, when you're teaching somebody else something, even if it's the most basic fundamental parts of that something, it's helping you out. So then number five, uh, of course, this is, this is a big one that we don't want to forget. Sleep on it. Take a break. Uh, don't try to cram in all the study that you can into one day, a week, a month. Set realistic goals for yourself. If you know that it's, you know, it's a very technical exam and maybe it's like the, the CISSP, it's a mile wide but an inch deep, I wouldn't try to learn all that in a month. I wouldn't try to learn all that in two months. I would set aside... Uh, what you know is possible for you. Maybe it's a half an hour a day. You can reliably do a half an hour a day. Set that time aside. Do that. Don't try to cram it all in. Get good rest. Sleep on it because that's when your brain really locks in those memories. All right. So we talk strategy, diffuse learning, focus learning. We talk tactics. Let's get into some of the tips. Now, these are, these are kind of universal truths of the exams I've taken so far. Maybe it's not always true, but in my experience, these are always true. So number one, Read the answers first on a multiple choice exam. When you read the answers, you're figuring out the context for the question. So a good example of this is if you read a question and it doesn't make sense to you right away uh, and you're kind of you're, you're working through it and you're already in your head, you're guessing, hmm, this seems like something I've seen in the study guide or maybe I've seen in real life. What could they be asking me for? You're already losing. If you were to read the answers first, you would already have the context because all the answers are going to be, they're going to narrow that scope of the question down. So you read the four answers first, which is multiple choice. Read the four answers first. Go back, read the question. The right answer will almost always jump out of you. If not, you're going to have a number one and a number two. You've eliminated 50% of the questions. You're that much further ahead. So number two, I love this one. One of these questions, or sorry, one of these answers is not like the other. Now, the one that is not like the other is either the correct answer or you can throw it away, eliminate it right from the get-go. Uh, I can't really think of a good example for that right now, but you'll know what I mean. When you look at four questions or four answers and you see that three of them are similar in some way or another, but then one's kind of out there in left field, you need to scrutinize that one. Why is it out there? Is it because the other three are garbage or is it because it's garbage? Just something to think about. So number three, when you see a very specific question, um, something that says, you know, uh, actually, you know what, let's, let me put together something here real quick. Hold on one second. All right. So here's a, here's a great example of what I'm talking about. This is a fun question. Don't get too lost in, into exactly what it is. You know, obviously I put this together for the purposes of this video. So the question is on the planet earth, humans use cars and trucks as vehicles as a form of transportation. Where do they drive these vehicles? A, humans always drive on the left side of the road unless it's the second Thursday of the month. B, humans always drive on the right side of the road. C, humans sometimes drive cars and trucks on roadways. D, humans are bipedal animals. They don't use vehicles. So when you're looking this over, if you use your first strategy, that I, or the first tip that I gave you, which is read your answers first, it helps you frame the or minimize the scope of the question. Second thing is, is one of these too specific? Uh, I'd say A is probably too specific. Uh, it's saying always, and then it specifies uh, a, a criteria beyond that. It says on the second Thursday of the month. So you can look at that, and as goofy as this seems, you know, talking about humans on planet Earth and where do they drive, I've seen questions on exams structured in this very same way where it's, it's so specific that it becomes difficult to imagine a scenario where it's always true. And if you can't think of a question or you can't think of an answer that is always true, it's probably wrong. The last thing I'm going to lead you with, and I know this has been a very dense session, a very dense video. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is um, managing your stress. You're going to see questions on the exam, on topics that 
maybe you've never seen, maybe you barely know, or maybe you look at it and say, this is, did I sign up for the wrong exam? Where did this come from? Don't let that fluster you. Don't let that stress you out. Don't make it feel like, oh man, there's going to be more like this. I'm going to be completely stranded on this island. I'm not going to have any idea what I'm doing. I'm going to be on this, this, uh, I'm going to be in this desert of, of knowledge that I don't know, looking for an oasis. Don't feel like that. Don't feel despair. Uh, some exams have what they call beta questions, and those are questions that the test taker doesn't have any knowledge of, and they put those in there for a variety of reasons. Some of them are, uh, you know, uh, for what exactly you would think it is. They're trying to catch people that are maybe using dumps. Some of them are, um, maybe it's a test or it's a question for a future exam, and they're testing it out to see how test takers do on it. So that's, that's you know, the last thing I want to leave you with is, uh, of course, when you're taking an exam, uh, when you're trying to pass a certification, you can feel a lot of stress. You've you've studied for weeks, months, uh, quite a long time to get to this point. You've spent money. You've taken time off from work. You've taken time away from your family, your friends, your social activities to focus on this. You probably woke up early, stayed up late. You've spent a lot of money on study materials. There's going to be stress there. Number five, don't worry about any of that. If you've done what I've done up to this point, it should lower your stress levels as much as as much as humanly possible. So. I hope this helps you. I hope you have a takeaway there. I hope there's some uh, some useful tidbits in here. Uh, if you liked what I was talking about here, leave a subscribe, leave a like. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I'm totally off base. I'll help you out. Let me know what you think. Again, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career.